All right, well, welcome back to episode nine of the Importantly Unimportant podcast. We got Brett and Zach and then Patrick down in the bottom of your screen there. What's going on, gentlemen? None what up, buddy? Um, I was doing research earlier, and I came up with a fun topic for something I wanted to ask you guys. Um, mm. As I like bought a house and stuff, and I've been kind of tinkering around with certain things, I wanted to ask you guys uh, if you've come up with any hobbies in this like past year that you've learned. Like uh, general hobbies at all? Yeah, any general hobby that like maybe something you never thought you would do or just a skill that you mm-hmm. learned or something? Golf for me. I picked up golf in the past year, and I I always used to make fun of people who played golf. Like, man, that's such a fucking boring sport. I can, I'll never play that shit. And I picked it up. I just bought, like, a set of used clubs from a, a guy that uh, left Island who retired. And I instantly got hooked. Like, after one game, I was like, this shit's actually pretty fucking fun. I could do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much time have you put into it so far? <clears throat> Not as much as I would like, uh, you know having a, a kid and a wife i don't i don't get to go out to the the golf course as much as i would like to but i do have like a little practice net i like to take to work and practice my chipping out there in the, in the grass and whatnot but <laughs> yeah Hell i feel yeah. like golf i feel like golf is like known as the sport where you're trying to avoid your wife and get out of the house i hear that story all mm-hmm. the time where all the guys go play golf on sundays or something drink the whole day away <laughs> yeah. yeah i could never get away with that though because my fiance plays golf Oh, no shit. <laughs> like, oh, well, let me just come with you. I'm like, uh, all right. <laughs> uh, I don't golf, though. Yeah, if I, uh, I don't know. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Pat. I, I was going to say I golf, but I don't do it, you know, the same way everyone else does where they're trying to get, you know, as little shots to the hole as they can. I just try and find more balls than when I showed up with. <laughs> Because mm-hmm. I can't hit a golf ball straight for my life. I just use, I can't even use my driver, man. I just use the eight iron and I just rip it further than you should be allowed to hit a ball with an eight iron. Why are you I just can't hit a driver iron? straight. Because I can hit it straight. But the eight iron I can is like hit short distance club. The I can hit an eight iron like 180 yards. That should be, that, that's ridiculous. I know it is. And then I use a driver. And I slice it 800 yards left. <laughs> <laughs> if you hit an eight iron that far, which, first of all, I don't believe. Sorry, I don't believe it. Then, <laughs> Made up number. <laughs> you need to be using a three iron. The lower the number, nope. the greater the distance. I understand the concept, mm. but I can't do it. <laughs> really? Yeah. My I... three, in my club set, I've got a three, and it's like a hybrid wood iron type driver looking if thing it's a hybrid then it should be easy to hit well i guess maybe if you can't hit with driver then maybe a hybrid's too hard to hit with yep so eight irons my club it's my go-to i don't know why i'll use it all the way down the fairway until i get up to the green and then i'll chip it on the green but i can keep mm-hmm. up with people as long as i use it because at least i can hit it straight so you don't have maybe i mean you don't really play that often but i would say maybe invest in getting a three iron just an, an actual iron to see if you can hit with that hmm <clears throat> there's a couple times where I'll play with some guys at a, a par three, like every hole's a par three, and it's it's just a nine hole uh, course. Mm-hmm. There's one hole in particular where uh, they usually use driver because you kind of have to go over a, a small like lake, not lake, a small like river. And uh, I usually use the three iron, and I can make it across almost every time. Whereas they use the the driver, and they can hit it almost like about the same distance I can hit my three my three uh, iron. Hmm. So. Yeah, I wish I need to go to the driving range a lot more and practice my drive because I, I can crush the ball. I just can't hit it straight. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so good with my driver either. It, it takes a lot of practice. What about you, Zach? What kind of skill have you like picked up or something random? Definitely not golf. I don't think I'm there yet in life. <laughs> Give it a few years. Um, I don't know if I really say it's a hobby or a skill or anything like that, but uh, I got back in touch with my lacrosse roots. Right. I think we talked about that last time I was on here, but mm-hmm. uh, I didn't think I'd ever coach, but here I am coaching. Uh, so I've been doing that, obviously, and uh, <laughs> that's pretty sick. As far as like new hobbies or anything goes, not really too much. I don't really have too much time, unfortunately. Yeah. Once one of these things die down, 
either stop picking up classes after classes for my instructor job, and then once they're or once the lacrosse season's over, I'm sure I'll find something to do. And you're still definitely not going to be golf. Too, right? Yep, I think most of the, at this point, all the big blocks have finally fell into place. Like we just locked down a DJ, and then they we're just waiting on getting the uh, officiant. You mean you're not going to okay. DJ your own wedding? <laughs> no, I do have actually a funny story about that. So, Ooh. not so much me DJing, but uh, I went to practice Thursday. We practice Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. So I go to the Thursday practice. Well, halfway through the day at work, one of the players requested to follow me on Instagram. And I was like, ah, I knew this would come eventually. I'm 26 going on 27. Like, I know they know I'm young enough to have old social medias and shit. <laughs> I forgot in my Instagram bio, my SoundCloud link is in there oh, for my music. Boy. Mm. And I show up to practice and all of them, instead of being like, what's going on, Coach Zach, blah, 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 all this other shit. And it's like, hey, what up, ZG? <laughs> like, oh, dog. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, y'all get on the fucking line, bro, making y'all run. You guys like my music so much, we'll run to it all practice. <laughs> Use their fucking grunts of pain in the next sound clip for your track. Yeah, I'm just running by them, holding my fucking phone recording. I'm like, yeah, it's going to sample nicely, dude. <laughs> so that's been fun. That sounds pretty lit. Yeah, but, it's great. Uh, how do you... You said that you're like a, a specific like attack or defense coach. I forget what you said you were. Uh, so yeah, I mostly coach the defense, um, but I help with the offense and I basically help coach as much as I can. Uh, my specific role is defense. However, the other two coaches, um, are both just dads of the kids on the team. Mm -hmm. And only one of them has actually played lacrosse prior, but that was also back in like the 1980s and the game has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is like they'll draw up plays or they'll do all this, that, and the other. And then I'm like looking at it with modern lacrosse eyes. Like that shit ain't going to work. <laughs> or I'm like, or I'm like, if you move him here to sit this, that, blah, blah, do this, then that guy should be wide open. Of course it were helps you, catch and pass, but we'll get there. Were you a defender when you played? Uh, I started out playing midfielder. So you play offense and defense with a short stick. Um, and then one day at practice, I picked up one of the long poles, like during a summer practice. So not in season, but it can be, it's one of those sports you can play year round, you know, uh, just joining like different leagues and shit. Um, and so one of the summers I picked up a long pole and went out there and just had fun with it. And apparently I did good enough where my coach told me to never put that back down. So that just became my position. Hmm. So yeah, I was playing defense. Specifically, I was playing a position called long stick midfielder. So you're like a defensive specialist. Oh, okay. Where you get sub subbed on and off, uh, depending on what the situation is. So I don't know much about lacrosse, but I assume the reason for the, the longer pole is so you have a, a larger reach to play defense and also more leverage to throw the ball farther down the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lacrosse in its nature and in its modern format is more offensive bias. Uh, it's a lot easier to play offense or get shoot and get goals and produce offense mm -hmm. than it is to stack a defense and um, lock that shit down. So, yeah, you get the pole because it, it gives you just more advantage. You have a lot more surface area to push off and control your space. And then, obviously, yeah, you have reach on their stick so you can really um, fuck up whatever plans they had. Whatever they, whatever the offensive player with the ball wanted to do, you can just kind of look at it and be like, nah, you're going to do what I want to do now. Is there, at least that's what your goal is. Is there like a form of checking in lacrosse? Uh, yeah, we have body checking and stick checking. Okay. So sure. you can, in today's rules, back when I played, you could lower your shoulder mm. and like hit someone with the intensity and the impact of football. Or actually kind of like hockey, since you guys are hockey guys. It's kind of the same thing. And then uh, you have stick checking, where you can throw a stick check anywhere from your hip up to your shoulder and all on the arms. However, throwing multiple that don't connect with the stick can result in a slashing call. So you 
have to hit the stick with the other with your stick. Mm -hmm. okay. Like you can't just sit there and beat the shit out of their arm. Yeah, because you can hold the stick with one hand and then protect that area with your hand, your other arm out. And I can't just sit there and wail on your arm. Like I have to make. There has to be intent to get to the stick rather than just me being like, gotcha. "Give me back the ball," as I'm just breaking <laughs> your arm in half. <laughs> that differs from hockey a lot because yeah. I yeah. feel like. Because it, what is the 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 pole for a lacrosse stick? Is it aluminum? Uh, it can be multiple metals. Okay, so like yeah. in hockey, right? You got your uh, fiberglass, and mm -hmm. stick on stick contact normally results in breaking the stick. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I guess lacrosse has stick. a stronger metal. Yeah. You can. I mean, you would think up sticks to get to the puck, but yeah, there's no slashing of the stick. Yeah. Yeah, it's like one of their. Things like you can buy um, aluminum alloy sticks, you can buy titanium alloy sticks, you can buy a bunch of different metals and shit, all depending on what you want. If you want a lighter one, you don't care so much about strength because you play offense, you'd buy a lighter one. Uh, if I played defense, so I bought one with a little bit more reliability to it for, you know, so I'm not just out. Because if your stick breaks uh, while you're on the field, you immediately have to come off. Do you get so to like if you're, in? Is it like no, it's like on the fly. So like if I'm playing oh. defense on the guy with the ball and I go to throw a check and he snaps through it, which happens, I just have to put <laughs> drop my stick, literally put my hands up and get off field as quick as possible. Well, if I'm guarding the on ball defender, now this guy has free reign to do whatever he wants until someone slides to him, right? Sure. Are you able um, to come right back out after you like grab, grab it? On yeah, the I could literally, I could literally just run to the sideline and the coach could throw me a stick and I just get back in there. Okay. However, in the sport of lacrosse, things can move and happen so quickly. Like, the maybe 10 seconds, if even that, for me to go get a stick and come back, like, it's that's yeah. enough time for someone to generate a shot. The same thing. When your stick here. breaks, sorry, when your stick breaks, you're never going to be in a position where it's super quick and easy to go get a new stick and return to the play. Like, there's no way. It's not probably like not in a crucial in a zone. I've been. We have a couple <laughs> absolute beasts on the team that I coach, and. I didn't convince these dudes just do meth before they hop out in the field. Because <laughs> uh, they have a kid, he's like a D2 commit, and he just seems like such a pain in the ass to guard. He literally, he, one, he's huge for like an 18-year-old. He's a giant. But uh, he's, I watched we had a couple games ago, like I want to say three weeks ago, he ran through like three people's sticks in one game. Exactly. Like, like they would. Ross Hitler. They would. <laughs> They would go to cross check them, which is when you have your hands separated too far on the stick, mm -hmm. and so it's called a cross check. But they were doing that because they don't know how to fucking play the sport. And they'd go to hit him, and it would literally just snap on his bicep, and he'd run through it like nothing happened. And then he came back, he subbed off, and I was like, "Dude, you're an animal." And he goes, "Why?" And I'm like, "Kid shattered his stick on you." And he goes, "Oh, did he? Which one?" I'm like, "You're a fucking psychopath." <laughs> <laughs> just a different, Crazy. just a different breed, dude. Do they have a uh, carbon fiber sticks? They do. That's probably what I would go with if I was a lacrosse player. Yeah, they're like two fifty. Normally, like they're really expensive, but Worth it's carbon it. fiber. So I mean, yeah. yeah, you're getting a really good product. It's a dope sport. I wish it was more available, like in more regions than just the East Coast, because it's a hundred percent an East Coast dominated sport. If you look at all mm -hmm. the teams that are top ranked in the collegiate level, it's Maryland, it's Virginia, Duke UNC is always super up there. Even upstate like Albany, um a bunch of just northeastern and then just east coast all the way down schools are Is it out in California? Really I'd imagine like that sport kind of follows good weather too. Um so Denver is a historically good team, funnily enough. Uh, Michigan and Ohio State are – Ohio State's really good. Michigan just got a program like four years ago. They kind of – I think it's title – I want to say title nine. But it, it, it's one of those sports that always gets the short end of the stick due to having to balance men and women's sports at universities. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time – like women's lacrosse, which is a totally different – game within itself is almost at every college any university you go to they'll have women's lacrosse they won't have men's lacrosse because they want to have football they want to have basketball they want to have all these other sports that know they're going to one make the school money and two uh, are just more widely popular due to how easy it is to go play basketball versus how easy it is to just pick up lacrosse and go play lacrosse like it takes sure. a lot um so it's one of those sports that are 
slowly sneaking its way into probably being within like the top five, top six sports in America. I it's always, been the fastest growing at the high school level for 15 plus years now, though. I always pictured lacrosse as like a, a wealthy white kid sport. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunately part of the stigma because of uh, lax bros and like that kind of culture yeah. that just completely got into it. But it's actually the oldest sport in America. How, um, what was I going to ask? Never mind. You can, you can keep going. I'm going to, I'm going to think of that question because it was good. I, I just forgot it. What the heck was it? Is a, what yeah, was lacrosse? I, Do they call it lacrosse or is it called field hockey or is, am I getting those two? So sports? there's field hockey and then there's women's lacrosse are two different sports. Okay. I but sure. even just men's lacrosse versus women's lacrosse is totally different sports. Women's lacrosse is a contactless sport that only uses short sticks mm-hmm. and just a lot of the rules are completely different. Mm. Like you I would watch remember. men's lacrosse and look at Sorry. women's lacrosse and you'd be like, what the fuck is going on here? I did remember what I was going to ask. I was going to ask this. Yeah. Obviously, Brett and I growing up playing hockey all the time. Uh, hockey yeah. was a difficult sport for people to pick up because of how expensive the sport was to play. Yeah. And Same thing. Not even, yeah, I was going to say not even just gear alone, but paying for a decent team to play on like an AAU team, a travel team where all the skill was. It's hard to keep up with the yeah. expenses of that. But how expensive is it to play lacrosse? Like, how it, do you normally buy so, all your own gear? Uh, all the gear that I used back when I played in college and high school was, I thought, at my parents' house. And I went to go, I went home for Christmas. I was going to go grab it because um, I was thinking about trying to find, <laughs> yeah, that or because if they're 18, like, I can legally go out there and we happen to be at the same park and like we can run one on one or whatever and I can <laughs> show them why I'm a fucking coach and they're the player and they should listen. Uh, <laughs> I'd fuck these kids up, but um, <laughs> it wasn't there. So I've been slowly trying to replenish my gear because also I want to look into finding hopefully an, an adult league for either indoor or outdoor lacrosse and get back into it because I'm only 26 and I would love to still be able to go out there and fucking play. Uh, so I just bought gloves the other day just gloves ran me about 180 didn't even buy like some top tier shit yeah i bought a new short stick just the head of the stick because there's three parts of a stick the head of the stick um which is usually just made out of plastic like hard plastic and depending on the shape is depending what you really want it to look like or whatever right not too much really goes into it uh, that cost me about one ten, and then the shaft ran me another one fifty. What? It's a very expensive sport, and that's why the entry level for it to get into it is like the barrier is money, and that's like as if you like if you're in a family, like let's say your kid comes home because his buddy plays lacrosse, and he's like, I want to get into lacrosse. You're like, Oh, sweet. Well, it's I don't know if you don't know anything about it. You're like, Ah, oh, maybe it's like football or where you just have to buy you cleats and gloves or something like that right right yeah. well it's basketball i just got to buy you shoes and buy your own ball for you or something you guys can meet up at a park and play no i mean if you want to buy your kid any kind of decent equipment that isn't second hand you're looking at just short of a thousand dollars sounds pretty similar to hockey hockey's a little bit more expensive but yeah it's pretty comparable yeah yeah hockey and lacrosse i think suffer both from that same like cost of entry that plagues both sports really because same thing for hockey is the same thing for lacrosse you got to go find somewhere to play hockey especially if you're looking to play ice hockey right or even just roller hockey you got to go to a rink you got to make sure that you can actually get time on the rink you might have to pay to be on a team or some Mm -hmm. shit like that right plus all your equipment's very expensive same thing for lacrosse you can't just go to like any park and throw around a football like you can right anywhere in america you have to like specifically hope or try to find a park that has lacrosse goals because they're very specific to that sport, right? I think if they could lower the cost of entry and it just continued to grow in America, I think America would fucking adore lacrosse for how fast of a sport it is uh, and just the intensity of the physicality of it. It's a very physical sport, just like hockey is, except I think it's even more physical than hockey because I can stick check you up here, right? And I can send your stick flying and everyone yells yard sale <laughs> and if that doesn't work i can just lay you out with my fucking body yeah yeah but hockey you know you're skating at 40 50 miles per hour and you're slamming bodies into fucking boards 
Yeah, hundred percent. I know. I think yeah, I, I think it's that. definitely a competitive or like you know right up there with hockey mm-hmm. as far as speed of the game goes. As far as uh, and actually, obviously, we were just talking pre-show about the more goals in in lacrosse just mm-hmm. based on I don't know what that's based on. Why do you think there's more? Is it like the goalie's pads aren't necessarily big, right? He just wears pretty much the same thing as anyone else. He's just got the the fatter head of the stick. Ironically enough, the goalies actually wear less pads than an what? average player. Is it yeah, so they don't your have to guard their arms and stuff for stick checks? Yeah, your average player wears a helmet, a chest protector, and then now, actually kind of because of what happened to Damar Hamlin, uh, now you have to have a very specific like heart protector <clears throat> on your mm-hmm. chest pads. Like a sternum plate or Because of a lacrosse ball, yeah, you can shoot a lacrosse ball. Like an average high schooler can shoot that shit like just under 100 miles per hour, probably 100 mm-hmm. miles per hour. Yeah. Like I clocked my fastest shot was like maybe like 105. What what is lacrosse and, uh, made of? Sorry, I'm sorry to cut you off. Pure rubber, solid pure rubber. Okay, it's like a hockey puck. puck. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. I, like for but example, it's got more I, velocity. You got a lot I, more velocity coming up over the shoulder than you do underneath. My clothing. senior year, I ate a shot straight to the ribs because mm-hmm. I just stepped in front of the shot and ate it. Mm-hmm. Bruised my lung. I was coughing up blood for an hour. Mm-hmm. Like Damn. it's dangerous sport. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but your average player wears a helmet, chest protector. Elbow pads, which can be of varying length, depending on how much of a pussy you are. Uh, I always wore really short ones because I play defense. I don't get, I don't get hit that often. I hit people. <laughs> um, and then that's basically it. Then you wear cleats. The goalies mm. don't wear any arm protection. Period. That. I thought, oh, and you wear gloves. Crazy. Sorry, you wear gloves. I thought some people wore shin guards too. Uh, if you do, uh, you're gonna get clowned. But some people do. I'm assuming. Not, not a whole lot. Yeah, of course. There's a select few yeah, yeah. guards. Yeah, yeah, And then you look at those kids and go, you're... Pussy. Never mind. I was gonna, <laughs> yeah, I was going to use different words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man. Yeah, I, I definitely always wanted to play, but it was still, like, growing. Uh, mm-hmm. I think my senior year, we had, like, a, at our high school, like, a club lacrosse team or something, but... I was already senior year. I was playing baseball, and I was like, you know, I'm not going to switch and learn a new sport my senior year. I'm just going to stick to what I know. Mm. Yeah, I get that. I personally think that I would rather watch a lacrosse game than, like, a high school football game. Like, yeah. Fo- football just does not do it for me. I don't like the yeah. sport that much. That's I was fortunate I... enough that the high school I went to, uh, they the high school treated our lacrosse team with, like, some actual respect like last actually just last year the high school that i went to went to the state championships in the state of north carolina that's awesome so they treated it with like on the same lines as the football team like we got our own field and team buses to go anywhere and everywhere we want to and student turnout was always really high for our games because we were it was one of the better sports at our school nice my uh i didn't like football at all growing up i thought it was stupid but then I decided, uh, besides like being, you know, when you're young and sports kind of overlap a little bit, um, yeah. in high school, they have that, you know, defined cutoff period before the, uh, when, when fall sports end and when winter sports begin basically. And then the same thing from winter to spring. Um, yeah. so I was finally able to play football. And then after I learned the game of football, watching football just became naturally easier because I was like, oh, this is what we do in practice and in games and stuff. That's the concept, and now I can get behind it. But I think it would be really hard to get into football. I don't know how people get into football that never played because there's a lot going on. <laughs> oh, it's like a chess game. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, too, because, like, you know, one person doesn't do their job correctly. It can blow up, like, the whole play and stuff like that. It's, it's actually pretty intricate. And I remember I watching it before going, like, it's just a bunch of grown men in tights, like touching each other's ass. Like, <laughs> what is the sport? And then I, I learned to appreciate it a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, football is the ultimate team sport yeah, because so. if one person fucks up, it can, like you said, ruin it for the entirety of that play, mm-hmm. and it's just a dead play at that point. Like Do you guys I, uh, I just... see anything about the combine that just happened? Uh-uh. Uh, I, yeah, dude. Uh, defensive lineman, I forget what school he ran like a four three forty yard dash. Oh yeah, dude from that Northwestern is terrifying, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, fuck being a quarterback right now. <laughs> yeah, that dude's speaks sneaky yeah. fat. What how, I saw. How much... you got no O lines. 
Yeah, yeah. no kidding. Poor Tua. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking a uh, Burrow. No, that's true too. That dude gets sacked. Yeah. I think he had the. I think he was sacked the most last season, out of all QBs. He was. He was, and then yeah, I think he set the unfortunate record in the Super Bowl for the most sacks taken. Mm. Yep. Last, not last Super Bowl, but the two year years ago. Yeah. 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 Oops. Needs an old line. I saw that Anthony Richardson, quarterback out of Florida, also known as AR15, uh, he ran a 4-4. Also set the record for the uh, most for a uh, quarterback for the vertical jump. No shit. Dude jumped straight 40.1 inches in the air. Impressive. Dude, and, uh, for a standing QB, jump. It's not going to be a long life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he's – so I'm a Panthers fan, so he's – He's like the guy the Panthers have been eyeing for a while because we assume the other three guys are going to go off the board quick. Oh, what do mm-hmm. you know? Another Cam Newton. Yeah, basically. That's <laughs> like what everyone's saying. He's like, holy shit, he's like Cam 2.0. And even the guy, and even him himself growing up was a Cam Newton fan. He used to call himself Cam Jackson in high Jesus school because Christ. he grew up loving Cam Newton. And then when he got into high school, Lamar Jackson was already starting to play. And he was like, fuck, Lamar Jackson's crazy. So he called himself Cam Jackson, which is the furthest thing from his name. But it's a weird nickname to call yourself. It's just another person's potential name. Yeah. Mm. So but you, you got a I topic? Yeah, so uh, oh, yeah. I wanted to, wanted to get your boy's opinion. So <clears throat> Thursday, right, I'm at work. It's a little bit of a controversial topic, and this is all opinion-related, but. I'm at work. Oh, so a trigger warning? A trigger warning, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I'm uh, talking with a co-worker, yeah, just kind of bullshitting, and I don't know how we got on the subject, but we got on the subject of trans people in general, right? And I brought up the uh, the video of the, the trans athlete who spiked that volleyball and hit that girl in the face. Did you guys see that video? No, I didn't. What happened? No, I didn't. So it's a volleyball game. High school, I think it's high school volleyball game. And it's a trans athlete, so born a male, transitioned to female, spikes this ball, and it creams this girl in the face on the other team, right? To the point where she, I believe, was knocked unconscious and had severe head and neck injuries. And I was just like, this, drink more milk. this should not be happening, in my opinion. Like That's the way I think about it. And then uh, my coworker brought up this <clears throat> other thing, which I thought I didn't know about, which I thought was crazy, is in New Jersey, the state made an agreement with some, uh, like almost like ACLU type thing, where they agreed to allow transgender people to choose which prison they wanted to go to, male or female, depending on what they identify as. <clears throat> so, trans wow. female said they wanted to go to a female prison and ended up getting two other inmates pregnant and had to be removed from that prison because obviously sex in prison is a no-no <laughs> consensual or not that's that's do, fucking wild yeah. do you want to take it first or or do you want um, me to take it first <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so let's let's start with this with sports what do you okay what is your opinion oh, so on much trans, trans athletes in sports? Uh, they need their own separate separate thing. Don't care. All right, so first of all, my stance on transgender people. Me, Zach Garland, no one else is just my opinion, right? Yeah. I don't care. I, I, I it doesn't affect you. me. I agree with you. You want to be – you're born a man, and all of a sudden you're like, fuck, I feel like a woman. Go for it, dude. Do that now. I don't care at all. It doesn't bother me. When it comes to sports, though. Men just, I don't want to say better because it's mm. different, but men versus women athletically, there's just so much of a gap due to the fact that our bodies naturally produce testosterone. Yeah, you, which I think you're right. trying to say is biologically men are usually a little bit superior to women. Physically, yes. Yeah. And that's not a hot take. Yeah. That's been known since the history of time, yeah. right? Uh, so when you have a transgender athlete that was born a male, transitioned to a female, mm-hmm. and you put them around females, mm-hmm. it is not fair to the females that were that are cis gender that are just female. It's not fair to them. Look at the 
was it the Penn State swimmer? Uh, yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Leah Thomas, I think. Yes, was born a male. While competing in the males swimming or whatever, I don't know shit about that sport, but while competing at that with that gender or that sex, um, unranked in America was just a swimmer. If you want, like out of all the swimmers collegially, they were one of them, mm-hmm. right? Right in Trans- the middle. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, like yeah. super yeah. average, just average for a collegiate average level swimmer. swimmer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, transitions. Starts competing at the female or on in the female side of the house. Mm-hmm. Dominates. Des- destroys an Olympic gold and a separate Olympic silver medalist for the national championship. Mm-hmm. Also look at Serena Williams, probably unarguably one of the most dominant female athletes in ever this. of all time, mm-hmm. right? Just athletically across the board, just regardless of sport, just a female athlete dominating like especially in her prime right just destroy we can agree on that yeah goes to play a top 200 male tennis player doesn't return a serve yeah. another case in point case this is not enough for you right wow. the u.s women's national soccer team yeah. shortly after winning the world cup 15 to mm-hmm. 2 yeah. talk about dominating right best of the best in the in the or in the world at their sport right as a team Goes to play yeah. FC FC Dallas's fifteen and under boys team mm-hmm. loses five to two against fifteen year old and under male soccer players. Yeah. yeah. You you have Hard to, to argue separate that. it. <laughs> then yeah. the issue with separating it is you have to almost create two separate categories within themselves because you have yeah. male to female athletes and then you have the female to male athletes. Mm-hmm. You can't just put them in one big pot and go, all right, if you're transgender, you guys all play together over there. We'll handle yeah. our shit over here. Because then that's not fair. Because then obviously everyone's going to want to fucking be, well, not everyone, but like the female to, or the male to female athletes are going to destroy anyone that's female to male. Mm-hmm. You know? I don't know what to do with it. I think we're probably ultimately going to do nothing about it, especially not in the near future because I think people are just completely burnt out. Yeah nationally about hearing about it which is unfortunate i don't really care transgender people can do whatever the fuck they want to do but athletically wise you can't tell me that there's going to be high schools all across the nation that are going to start separating their their categories even further especially schools that are in the middle of fucking nowhere and can't afford to suddenly have different different you know (laughs) right yeah exactly you can't do that and I know that's what I was, that collegially. That was the basis as you were talking about it. My my initial thought was like, dude, some some schools can't even afford to have multiple programs on their own. And now you're going to want to but the same I don't want to like label people uh, or specific groups of people or anything, right? But like think of if you wanted to play a sport and your school didn't have a sport and you also didn't have enough money to play that sport outside of say the school didn't have a program Mm -hmm. you've got like a travel team take i don't know say the school doesn't have a baseball program you want to play on like a travel baseball team right Mm -hmm. so now you can afford to play on the travel baseball team and your school doesn't have a sport so now you don't you lose that opportunity to play so yes it's hard to determine what you should do with it because you can't afford everybody everything all of the time Mm -hmm. so it's it's a hard argument to fight against, really, because I'm at a loss for words right now just trying to explain my like thought process on it. I'm like, how are you supposed to afford the opportunity for people to play the sport they want to play? And then you have to deal with, you know, arguing like we don't have enough money for that and you don't have enough money to go pursue it on your own. Yeah. So You're not like, even going to have enough people for that, though. That's the thing, right. too. I, I highly like I don't think it's as common mm-hmm. as it is made to seem like in the news. I think obviously sure. the news being the news it is in America, anytime they can get a hot topic or a hot story, they're right, they're gonna spoon feed it to the rest of America so everyone can be up in arms or you'll know, be fucking uh whatever they want to be about the news, right? Yeah. You hear trans people in the news, you have half half the people are like, Oh, that's disgusting. The other half people are like, Go off queen. No one cares. Yeah. I I don't care about, you know, that but Let's say in a county in Ohio mm-hmm. 
or Nebraska or Iowa in a county, how many transgender athletes do you really think you're going to have in a county? Yeah. In some of the rural states. Yeah, I have no idea. So Probably like four. It's probably low, right, but like... And they're going to be of different... Of, they're going to be on each side of the fence of, you know, what the transition was. Like, even if they want to play basketball, you can, that's not enough to people to even put on a court for a fucking yeah. basketball game. And four mm-hmm. people are still probably being generous. But then they're well, also then robbing, then, especially if they're high schoolers, in my mm-hmm. example, right? They're high schoolers. Then you're robbing these kids of being able to play any kind of athletic or any athletics period, unless it's like a solo sport. <clears throat> so this is kind of what my thought process was when I was when I was talking about it is. Originally, I, I thought the same thing you did, Zach, which was they should have their own division based on if they're male to female or if they're female to male, right? <clears throat> but then again, mm-hmm. same thing. I thought, well, there's just not going to be enough people to play certain sports. There's, they're not going to have enough mm-hmm. to play, you know, two basketball teams. Or So I was like, well, from a safety standpoint and from a economy standpoint, I think the best option would just be if you were biologically a male, you play in the men's division. If you were biologically a female, yeah. you play in the female division. Sucks to be that way, but that's the safest and the more affordable approach. It also doesn't, yeah. you know, it does also it also doesn't make biological females lose out on opportunities for scholarships and Lord knows what else. True, and then you can also allow them to do whatever in whatever locker room of their new gender. Yeah. If that's what they feel comfortable yeah. in, right? Like, if you're a male to female athlete, you play with the boys' team, yeah. but anything privately you need to do based on your new gender, you can do in like in the gender of that of the, your new of your transition, right? Yeah, I mean that makes sense, but then also, I, that just isn't gonna work for people either. Yeah, like it's not right, not, and then you can't even just... call it you can't even call it like the the boys' baseball team anymore, right? Right, because. You know, because some people team. are going to get upset about that. It's not yeah. all boys. I guess don't say boys <laughs> and girls, just say male, female. That's tough because well, now a lot whose of sports team are you are called that. Like, I, I literally <laughs> just talked for. As a, as a man, that doesn't mean they are yeah. a biological male. Like, I, I say male, female is biological term, men, women is more of a, a gender term. Yeah. Sure. So if you use the term male, it's a biological definition for males team. And if you say men, it would be like a gender thing. That's the, that's but the do, way my mind works. And I I talked 15 minutes about lacrosse, but the the version of lacrosse I played is called mm-hmm. men's lacrosse. It is men's lacrosse because yeah, yeah. the women's lacrosse is a totally different game. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Like, just change the name. If you're a transgender to a female... I could 100% see someone getting offended that they're playing men's lacrosse, but they're, well, you know, they identify I, as a woman. I hate to say it, but feelings aren't exactly what make the world work. Yeah, it does in today's age. If you're going to be upset about a, a name on a sports division, then you got bigger problems and you need to toughen up. Is how we were all raised, but that's <laughs> not how these new generations are being raised, and that's not the world they live in anymore. That's that's what I even just for my opinion. This is what I'm saying. It's my opinion. And I'm saying, yeah, I mean, even the truth. That is my opinion on it. Even just away from the transgender side of the house. Right. Me and Pat are both in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. The basic training, the boot camp that we went through. And then I'm a tech school instructor, which is where you learn your job. The tech school that me and Pat went to is not the same that it is now. That is is not the same that I'm in currently teaching. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not allowed to really even raise my voice. I can't. If I got to correct someone, it's got to be like, a, you know, pull them aside and really. I mean, it sounds crazy to anyone that hasn't been in the military. Obviously, I know you've been around the military, so you get it, Brett. But other people that may see this, right, and have never had, don't have military family members, nothing, right? It's not, you don't, it's not that you don't speak to people like they're not humans, it's when you're in the beginning stages of joining the military, you get spoke to, to for a certain way, almost out of just solely efficiency. Like if I'm yelling at someone because their uniform looks like shit, of course they're going to feel bad because I'm yelling at them and they think it's a very personal thing to them individually, but I'm yelling so that everyone around them can hear the correction so they can correct themselves without me having to 
stop every individual airman and make corrections, right? Yeah. One kid falls on the sword for the rest of his class so that they all can look better and, you know, uh, a, a heed to our regulations and our standards. Yeah. Can't do that anymore. Can't just yell. Yeah. Can't be like, girl. holy shit, your uniform looks like ass. I got to pull them aside and be like, hey, man. Air Force Instruction 36-2903 says that your name tapes need to be right here in the Velcro and not, like, over here. And he's like, oh, thanks, Sergeant. I'm like, yeah, good boy. Go all back to class. Yeah. Just not, like, you gotta fucking spoon feed them nowadays. So, and that goes for, like, the entire generation. <clears throat> this is a another subject that actually, when I was at work, it kind of trans... What's the word I'm looking for? It transitioned into this, which was... This kind of like mentality of feelings are more important than facts is pretty new, right? Like I would say very I would say arguably like the last ten years being generous, five years realistically is when things started like changing seriously fast that direction. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. So this is just a theory of mine, and I just thought of it like on the spot the other day, which was I want to get your your opinions first. Is what do you think led, like the, the number one factor, you think led to that being the norm today? Hard to put my finger on like one singular thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I know not just this specifically, but more of it like a concept, but mm-hmm. things like participation trophies, mm-hmm. right? So uh, we all played sports growing up. I remember, I still remember, I'm turning 27 this year, I still remember what losing at a high school sport, what a, at, a, at middle school sports felt like, felt like shit. Mm-hmm. However, me losing is what pushed me to become a better athlete. Yep. Obviously, I'm not a pro athlete, so I'm not out here, but like, that's what made me the best in the world, right? <laughs> but it's like, the, it, even at a young age, like, losing sucked, and you're like, fuck, I don't want to do that anymore. So what do you do? You go out and work your ass off yep. to get better at whatever it was, right? Mm-hmm. I think getting your ass kicked in a sport and the coach still being like, here you guys go. You guys came in, you guys came in fourth. Here's your trophy. Everyone gets a trophy. It's like, what, I mean, the mentality that that concept or that would create, right. is just like, ah, you're right. I did my best. That's a good it is one. what it is. That's a good one. Yeah. And I don't think there's any other example you can use because I was trying to think like, you know, there wasn't, you think back to like world war one and world war two which was you know the the early 1900s to mid ish 1900s and there was a draft going on and they it was really about country unity Mm -hmm. and i think everyone kind of had to pull together to work on that concept to beat the enemy and then once you start getting into the 80s and 90s with like desert storm desert shield there wasn't a draft going on at all. And I, I don't think um, even looking at like the Vietnam war when like media came out and that's what really started turning the tide of, um, you know, people protesting the wars and seeing what was actually happening and stuff that kind of started leading toward a more progressive uh, way forward, if you will. Um, But I don't think everything in the country is run by war either. So, I kind of started leaning away from that example the more that we talked about it. Um, Mm. I think, I I don't really know, man. (laughs) To be honest, I I feel like the participation thing, and I don't even know where that started either. Was it like one one family or like one, one group of coaches for one team that was like, yeah, we went out there and played our best, but you know what? Everyone deserves a reward for going out there and trying. And then one, you know, family saw that move to a new area and then started implementing that. Like, did it grow like a seed kind of like that? Yeah. Or, I don't know. I think it's just the idea that everyone's special. And it's not that everyone isn't special. It's just your opinions aren't more important than the per- opinions of the person next to you. Yeah, but it seems like, like that idea. It seems like it is in some aspects and it isn't for others. That's what I'm saying. I think that's, yeah. that's, I think. Kind of what I was trying to, I think that like if you boil it down, what I was trying to say with the participation trophy is that it's like the whole special little snowflake kind of ideal has really overtaken 
probably the end of our generation than uh, the beginning of Gen Z and these guys, right, that have come into the play and then now I think there's Generation Alpha. It's the idea that, like, you as an individual, your opinions are the best. You are a special person. You're entitled to everything going your way all the time, and that's just not reality, but we're allowing that to become reality because we don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Mm. So, hot take. This is, again, just my opinion and what my thought process went to. This, this was my, what I thought was the number one factor in this becoming today's norm, which was specifically third wave feminism. The reason being, I know what that is. Uh, so yeah, me neither. You have the Can first, you give us a background? Yeah, yeah so you have, you, have, you have first wave feminism where they just wanted to be equal to men and they wanted to have the right to vote, right? Oh, I see. Yeah. And okay. Second wave feminism, which I think came around in like the 60s or 70s, where it was, we want to be equal to men in the workforce and do what we want with our bodies, right? Cool. Yeah. Third sure. wave feminism, in my opinion, is all about we're superior to men. We should do whatever we want at all times. Everyone can be a female. There's no special thing about a female anymore. Go ahead, balls wide, right? That's the way I see it. So now you have the third wave feminism. They don't really fight for women's rights. They just fight for the women to be able to do whatever the fuck they want. They don't want to be equal to men. They want to be superior to men. They think they're better than men. Is that a real thing? That's the way I perceive it. Okay. And the only reason I said that was because I don't know where the ideology came from, where women or, you know, whether it's uh, male versus female, if you will, or uh, race versus another race or something like that. But my take on all of that is, dude, we're all just people, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not better than you based on anything. I don't mm -hmm. like people based on interactions, not previous factors like whatever race you are or where you come from or whatever like that my whenever i judge someone it's it's based off of an interaction with them if i found you annoying because you talk too much then i just think you're annoying doesn't matter like on an individual level right yeah Not like it, a pre preconceived why would I hold, bias why would i hold anything against you because of race or religion or anything like that right um and the fact that the, the idea that you would be superior to anyone just to do whatever you want, who's holding you back from doing whatever you want? I don't, I honestly can't say that I've ever seen an actual example of someone holding someone else down be, based off of race or gender or Religion sexual orientation or, or anything like I've never seen that before ever. Uh, I've seen it based off of, you might not be in the friend circle yeah, because you're not in the friend circle. Maybe you don't, get the promotion that you wanted or you don't get invited out to the outing with the group of friends that you thought you had or something like that. But I've never, ever seen it like in a, I know what you're saying. You it, it, it's style. always been based on like friendships or knowing someone above you or something like that, but it's never, ever been based on superiority, if, I, if you will. So I see what you're saying. Yeah, you weren't, you weren't raised in the South. <laughs> yeah. That's so, true. I was raised in Massachusetts too, which like hearing about racism to me like was just crazy. Because I'm like, how? Uh, who cares? <laughs> who yeah. the fuck cares? So, I've been around a few states. Obviously, you guys know, <clears throat> and I, I agree with you, Pat. It doesn't happen as often as media and people like it like to think it is. It does happen for sure. Like I've seen it firsthand. Like uh, I work with some some welders in Georgia. And we, we worked with two black dudes, cool dudes, but our, our supervisor, when it was just the white people around, said some racist shit. <laughs> he didn't look down on them or treat them different at work, but he did not like them as a person because they were black. No, so really? It happens, but it's not as widespread as the media wants you to believe it is. And it's also not as open as it used to be just because of today's political climate. You can't, like... There's serious repercussions if you're openly racist nowadays. So it's Which it should, should be. be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. So racism still yeah. exists, 
but to the level that people want you to believe it is, 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 is not, it's not that hmm. my opinion. I mean, that's good to hear, right? Honestly, I, I, I'm glad that it's not as widespread as people make it out to be. Um, and it, it's still a crazy concept to me. Like I, I can't wrap my head around it and I've also never seen it happen. So hmm. obviously the uh, country is moving semi in the right direction. Right. But I, I don't know. I'm glad I'm not at the top making decisions like that because there there's so many different options to weigh. It's it's hard to please everyone. Well, actually, it's not possible to please everyone. Yeah. So. Well, that's that idea of nature versus nurture, right? Yeah. If you were to put like a baby, a fresh human being, mm-hmm. hot off the press, right? They don't know shit about shit. They don't care about what you look like, what you believe in, what gender you are. You're just a thing to them. They don't give mm-hmm. a fuck. Yeah. Right? If you're in an environment where all around you are, we don't like black people, or we don't like Italians, or we don't like Muslims, or we don't like Catholics, whatever you want to fucking be, right? You absorb all that shit, and that becomes your reality. Mm-hmm. When I was in college, I was rushing a fraternity. I'll call them out, Kappa Alpha of East Carolina University pieces of shit it's a fraternity started by robert e lee they have a mural of robert e lee in their fucking living room of their frat house i'm lined up it's like a whole shake hands meet people type thing i'm lined up on my Mm -hmm. left is an italian kid very clearly italian Mm -hmm. beautifully tanned skin gorgeous guy chef's kiss (laughs) on my right is uh a black dude didn't know him seemed chill didn't give a fuck. You go down the line, all the brothers go down the line and shake your hand and, you know, get your name before you guys start like a whole kind of like mixer, like meet and greet type thing, right? Yeah. They're going down the line. They skip the Italian kid. No one touches the Italian kid's hand. He's just holding his hand out there and it looks ridiculous. Mm. Shakes my hand. Everyone shakes my hand and gets my fucking name because you're white. I'm like, I, I'm Irish, German, like I as white as you can be really, right? Skip the black kid's hand. Most people don't even look him in the eye. And they keep going down this fucking line. It's the same fraternity that does something called coon hunting with their pledges. Jesus. That's part of their pledging process. Like one of their last things to do to become a brother is you wear all black. You go out at night. And they shoot you with airsoft guns. If they shoot you, you're dead. And you know, you're not a brother anymore or whatever, right? It's that's in twenty that was in twenty fourteen, twenty fifteen. That's wild. Not that's not that long ago. No. Right. All right. It's probably still happening today, honestly. Oh, without a doubt. I believe it. Yeah. They've been doing that shit for fucking decades, I'm sure. And it's not like it's a secret. Like I didn't even rush that fraternity at all. Like yeah. I didn't like them at all, obviously. So I've heard about it and saw this shit happening fucking all the time. I am I just want to clarify. I am not sticking up for these guys, but from uh, from a sociological standpoint, just based on what I would assume is the reason for that, is uh, what you said is their surroundings. They were raised in that kind of environment of racism, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But I think there are people that do shit like that but aren't just to fit in aren't truly racist yes yeah they do fucked up shit because that's the environment they're around but i know deep down they feel shitty about it that doesn't mean they're a good person but it also doesn't mean they're a terrible person it just means they are not on the right moral path in my opinion i think it's also just human beings though i think you got a choice you know yeah if everything you you could stand up and say no to something like that yeah for sure. Like, but, that's way too far. But peer pressure... If the entire exist, human race... Knowledge. Yeah. If the entire human race looked exactly like me, mm-hmm. except you had versions of Zach Garland with five different hair colors, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. There'd be one hair color group that would not like the other hair color group solely based on the fact that their hair looks different. Yeah, that's just human nature. It's, it's I think always- environment accelerates the process, but I think as a human being, especially if you get shorted on something... Let's say you and a person of color go up for a promotion. The person of color gets it. Probably deserved it. Without a doubt, probably deserved it, right? If you guys have this, if you guys turn in your things and work performance-wise, they're just way better and they should have won, 
most people are like, damn, way to go, dude. Whatever. All uh, the human factor in you, I think, is going to try to rationalize this in some way or compartmentalize your feelings, and it's going to turn into, oh, you're black, yeah, or you're a person of color, whatever color you want it to be. Yeah. And you feel jaded one way or the other, but yeah, go ahead, Pat. Uh, how about uh, like scholarship selections for colleges mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. colleges are trying, they're, where they're coming from is a good idea, but I don't necessarily think it's the right idea, right? Where they're, they're basing acceptance rates into school based on race, diversity, ethnicity, diversity, oh, what right? What is that called? Reverse. It's like a... It's like a, it was like a government program. Yeah. I think it still is. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of like uh, actual uh, laws now and, and stuff like that where they have to have a certain, uh, not really, I wouldn't say laws, but there's, there's like funding problems where they have to have a certain percentage of diversity in order to get certain funding from certain places. So yeah, I and think it's outdated. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Now is that an overcorrection? I think it's uh, yeah, an outdated. I, was... I think that needed to happen. It needed to happen back in like the 60s when segregation was still going on mm-hmm. and the civil rights movement was in full effect. I think that needed to happen, especially from a federal level down because yeah. mm-hmm. you want to force this desegregation. But nowadays, not that racism isn't still around and people still aren't racist. People are going to be pieces of shit regardless, right? Yep. I think the general populace doesn't give a fuck what color you are, what religion you are, right? Yeah, yeah, so. 100% agree. For them to still Maybe. legally have to maintain like a, almost on like a quota level, I think it's just foolish. Yeah, so I'll, I'll say I think the the end goal in mind was the right idea, but the way they went about mm-hmm. it was the wrong way. Yeah, like you, of course, or it was just too late. <laughs> is good, obviously. Yeah. I mean, it, it's good to have different cultures and diversity and background in the same place because it also opens people up to new experiences. But it shouldn't yeah. be based solely on race your hair color like there's even uh scholarships that oh you have blonde hair blue eyes we're going to give you a scholarship for five thousand dollars a year oh you mm-hmm. know, you, you're black i'm going to give you a scholarship ten thousand dollars a year it shouldn't be like that yeah. it should be based on your skill or your education or that kind of thing like Not, you individually right yes yeah. it shouldn't be based on looks it should be based not on because you check a box correct that's exactly what I'm yeah. saying And I think yeah. a lot, all, all, a big part of uh, today, too, the problem with uh, today is people don't know how to determine racism from stereotypes. There's a lot of people that are pegged as being racist that just think stereotypical. They, they don't think they're better than black. They don't think they're better than Mexicans based on their skin color. But they do believe, you know, a certain percentage of blacks commit more crimes, that kind of thing. It's a stereotype. But it doesn't mean they're racist. Racism hmm. Yeah, is, I agree. Racism is, I, agree with I think I'm better than you because I'm white. Or I think I'm better than you because I'm black. Most people aren't racist. Most people just have stereotypical tendencies. Or not most people. Some people have stereotypical tendencies. I would say even subconsciously, it probably is most people. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, I, I think racism is not really as big a problem as people make it out to be. I would also like to highlight the fact that you are a white man yeah. with blonde hair and blue eyes. Yeah. And you're also a, I mean, you're a straight white male. Like you're the, I'm the, the most. that's like the right thing too. Because I, I agree in the sense that like I don't see... Or, like, I haven't seen that racism is as big of a problem as people are saying it still is. But I also am of the group that probably is the biggest culprit of it. Hmm. And I'm also not a group, I don't belong to a group that is historically or, like, I I haven't seen anyone be racist to me. Mm-hmm. I'm a straight white male. Yeah. I've been, like, the dominant character preset on this planet since like the beginning of time yeah, like i don't know i would agree with you that historically you and i and and, and patrick as well our race of caucasians <laughs> are throughout history the have been mayos the, the, the most <laughs> racist 
or been racist the longest, I should say, time time wise. But I like think, just down the board. I think today, though, in today's America, racism is split split pretty fifty fifty. I think. It is normal nowadays to bash white people more than it is to bash other races. Yeah, there was a um, uh, there was a comedian that came out and was talking about that, where it was almost like now when you go out on stage, I think it was like an Andrew Schultz podcast or something like that. Shout out Andrew Schultz, that dude is hilarious. Yeah. Um, but he was going out and saying that like a lot of comedians now were going out on stage and they're being mm. safe. Like they have to think about their jokes. And then a lot of the jokes have turned more towards just people in general, but just making fun of white people. Yeah. Because that's yeah. just what's funny to the general the, public now. Was well, the safest option. Yeah. Right. And, and where do you draw the line between comedy and actual like racism too? Cause like, I, mean, I think a joke is a joke, yeah, but yeah, I agree. there's obviously a line and, and I can't necessarily determine it because I'm not, the culprit of the joke either i don't think there is a line because i see comedy as an art form i don't think i won't say 100 percent, but i don't think i'll say i'll say 90 percent of comics are not out there to hurt people's feelings they come up with edgy shit to make people laugh that's what makes it funny yeah yeah now i'm sure there are some comics that are racist and tell racist jokes and they can get away with it because they're comics. Mm -hmm. But I would say predominantly in, in my belief, I would say that it's, they're just being comedians and it shouldn't be taken seriously. Yeah. It's, it's kind of the whole point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If, uh, if, if we start drawing that line, then it's never going to stop. I mean, it's already, the normal thing nowadays to have some sort of today's political climate in movies, whether it be a gay marriage, a trans something, it's got to be in every movie nowadays. Otherwise, that mm -hmm. movie is seen as being racist or transphobic or whatever the fuck you want to call it nowadays. I mean, I'm mostly okay with that. Yeah, I don't give a I shit. I get but just make shouldn't... more mainstream media more inclusive to everyone. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. like, fuck yeah, baby. But you also got to do it. Where it makes sense. Like, yes. if you're making a historical movie, yeah, I would like to see it historically accurate as much as Hollywood can, right? Like, yeah. I'd, for the most part. But if you're making, like, a, you know, a brand new rom-com in 2023, yeah. I don't give a fuck if it's a... Yeah. If both of the main characters are gay. Yeah. Or if one's transgender and the other one's, you know, a guy that looks like me. I don't care at all. Mm -hmm. Am I going to watch it? Probably not. But that's because I'm not the target audience. Yeah, that's but also it, like it saying be cool for people to have things to go see. It. Like, oh, I'm like that. I'm transgender, and like this movie is for me. Mm. Fuck yeah, man! Do what you want. But fitting it into like every little every movie nook and cranny again to just check a box and make sure like, and we're good to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that doesn't. I don't think that benefits anybody. Nope. Yeah. It's like if I'm not into nature documentaries. I'm just not going to watch the nature documentary, man. Right. People are going <laughs> to watch the same thing. Watch. It's yeah. not something I want to watch. You know what I mean? Like it, it's, I, I just personally, I get bothered how it's so politicized now. Like you, it, it's like you have to have it in a movie in order for that movie to not get shit on by all sorts of different hate and, and hate groups and, and the inclusion groups. Yeah. It's also the fear of cancel culture. Yeah. It's insane, man. Or, New Age cancel culture. Cause cancel culture has been around for a long time, or at least the idea of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go against group think and now you're what you want, right? But yeah, just yeah. the fact that anything you say, and it's funny, we were talking about all this on a podcast that's going to be posted on YouTube. Yeah, fuck but it. anything you say, generally, like at some point in time, someone can be filming you, someone can be doing whatever. And I don't want to say one slip up. Because obviously, depending on what the severity of it is, you see shit on Twitter all the time of like people just being fucking wild. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they get absolutely cooked alive. It's like half good because you are starting to root out some of the shit that was going behind, going on behind closed doors or in small groups of people. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't leaking out to the main majority for us to fucking crucify them and destroy this behavior on the spot. 
the other half of it, especially for things like comedy and these things are supposed to be pushing the envelope a little bit. It's the whole point of it. Yeah. You're, you're doing crowd work as a comedian and you make one joke that everyone laughs at. One person finds it disgusting. Good chance one person, the one person that found it disgusting, there's a lot of people that also are going to find it disgusting, especially when you post it on Twitter, like, yo, go get this guy and you're ruining someone's career. Yeah, well, I think that uh, to, just to add on to that comment specifically, that also is now the normal thing to do in society is I disagree with something. I'm going to post it online and have a whole group of people go after this person instead mm-hmm. of just saying like, oh, you know, I didn't like that joke and then just fucking move on from it. You're yeah, never you going to like you everything in, mm-hmm. in society, period. There's going to be things that upset people. There's going to be th- things that don't upset people. Don't fucking make it such a big deal, and then it won't be a big deal to you. Can't be like that, Brett. Everyone's special. Everyone's <laughs> opinions are the best opinions. There's no other answer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you, there was, speaking of what, Patrick, uh, you might need to put a disclaimer before this video now. <laughs> yeah. The uh, I had a feeling. I tried to shout out a trigger warning. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a, I, I want to say British, maybe Australian comedian. This actually just came up at work the other day where he comes out on stage and he's like, what happens when you're offended? And everyone kind of just looks back at him like, I don't know. And he's like, right. You just get offended and then you get over it and you fucking move on with your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it just made me laugh, man. Cause I'm like, you can't make everyone happy. And if you do something that, that pisses someone off, then you just either, you know, say, Hey, I didn't like that. I have an adult, like actual conversation with someone and tell them how you felt about it. And if you, if they continue to do it, that's how they carry themselves, I guess. Uh, then you just don't hang out with them as much anymore. Right. Like it's being a, be a fucking adult, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On a one-on-one level. Of course yeah. that only goes for certain things though. <clears throat> yeah. Like the one-on-one level is talking to somebody, but like for movies and shit, you can't really talk to the director and be like, I don't like what you did with this movie. Yeah, because yeah, that's it. true. So they should just get. The I don't know. <laughs> I feel like it's such a gray area, because at one side, like it is, it is helping us weed out things like racism and shit like that, slowly but surely. I'm not saying that cancel culture is like this magical tool that's going to help make America or just make our society as a whole better in some way. Not saying that because that I think it's usually the results of it are for the worse, not the better. But it is kind of like part of the idea that change is good, but change sucks. And it is, we're starting to change more where a lot of things are more accepted and I'm cool. I'm personally cool with that. Like, I mean, wasn't it just like 15 years ago or maybe just a little longer or shorter that like gay marriage was finally legal. And then now I think I don't even bat an eye at anything like that. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. but it was, was like I, the first state to legalize it, I think. It's, yeah, like it, as of just 10, 15, 20-ish years ago, which is 2023, mm-hmm. but imagine like in 2003, yeah, not that long ago, mm-hmm. gay marriage was still this almost taboo thing. And it just wasn't, you couldn't do that in regard, like depending on what state you lived in. And then now every state has, it's federally legal. I also think so pushing it forward is for for things like that, pushing that forward and accelerating that change is good. Mm. However, we can't overindulge and be thinking that every opinion we have is the best opinion on the fucking planet. Agreed. But who who's to make that decision? That's the hard part, man. Society. That's the hard part. Right. right. It's it, group think. It's, yeah, it, it is society, but I think a big problem also with today's society is if you're on the minority of a topic, then the goal of the majority is to just silence you and not actually listen to your topic. I don't think... Hasn't that been the goal for all time, though? Like, if you want your idea to get across the finish line and you want to beat the other argument, then what were you supposed to do? Yes, to an extent. But, like, I think it is much more dominant today. Like, obviously, yeah, there's there's always, like, a political silence type stuff. 
especially in, mm-hmm. in other like third world countries. But I think throughout history in America, there's been a lot more open for debate on like a, a world stage than there is nowadays. Like nowadays, yeah, I think media accelerated it for sure. Nowadays, you know, there's people that try to just go talk on college campuses that are from opposite sides political parties, and you have people that are purposely going to these things just to try to not let that person talk. Mm-hmm. Like not not like protesting silently and you know standing out front and saying don't go in type of thing. They're going into the event and causing a ruckus to purposely try to not let this person speak at all. That's harmful. Again, it's a giant gray area because I could see where that would be harmful if it's just one political topic that doesn't affect a bunch of people. But so when I was on campus at ECU, there was this dude that would always go on there and he'd have the signs where it's like, God hates you, you'll burn in hell. And he was super anti homeless like he was a huge homophobe yeah. and that's it but, it but it was not like he's just holding a sign with his shitty beliefs on it mm-hmm. but he was literally like if you're a walking by or whatever and you're like a group of dude like you and your buddies were just walking to the dining hall to get food for lunch he would just call you out and be like y'all better not be sucking each other's dicks you'll fucking burn in hell and dropping f-bombs like he was actively targeting people and shit like that mm. fucking piece of shit yeah. but if a bunch of people are going into to protest someone that like is actively trying to promote a mal- something with almost a malicious intent you stop that shit but a college campus isn't going to allow somebody to come on campus and speak publicly who's maliciously attacking things they he was on campus no i'm saying like he was in, like he was in the middle speakers, campus. guest speakers that Oh, you mean like a college-sanctioned event type yes, thing? Yes, college is not yeah. going to let somebody on campus that's purposely there to, to maliciously promote hate or anything. Yeah, campus police never removed that dude, though. Yeah, but I mean, I'm assuming... Until he, he got his ass a, beat. I'm assuming he was a student, or no? No, just a grown man. He's like 40-something. Just, just a dude that was out there. Well, just, I mean, just yelling at, like, 18, 19-year-olds, freshmen. Like, that kind of shit is, is hateful and ridiculous, but... Most people are just going to walk past that and be like, yeah, this dude's fucking insane. They're not going to listen to him. I agree with yeah, you, Pat, cool. on, on the sense that the other, like, if you have an opinion and there's an an immediate opposite of that opinion, I, they've always been trying to silence each other since, like, yeah. the history of time. It's kind of the point of an argument. And an opinion. I think now you just have more tools at your disposal to silence the other group. Right, especially if you're in the majority, or even in the minority, you just have more tools because you're a lot more. We're able to see constantly everybody's opinions about something thanks to social media. Right, Mm -hmm. if someone has a thought, they can send it out to the world for everyone to see on the spot. Which means you're now open to what other people think of what your opinion is, Mm -hmm. and if it is one of those opinions, like let's say. Not to get into it, because I don't want to talk about it, because this, this episode has already been super dicey as it was. <laughs> but, like, let's say you're pro-life versus pro-choice, and you put something out there that's pro-life. Everyone that's pro-choice is probably going to come at your throat. Yeah. And, obviously, there's ways to talk to people. Like, kind of what you're saying, Pat, like, let's all be fucking adults and have a conversation. I may not agree with you at the end of it, but we can still fucking communicate. Like that's the gift that we have as humans right. is our ability to speak languages. I love having just being political... like, fuck you and die. Yeah. I love having yeah. political conversations with people because it lets me open my eyes to see things that I've never experienced and to see like why people feel a certain way about a topic and stuff. Like I've always thought that, uh, topics like that, even if I am not, uh, if I'm not in the same like political agenda with, as the other person is like just hearing why they think that way and like how, you know, maybe life experience or growing up or whatever, like it, it just helps broaden, um, my, my brain to things that I've never experienced before. Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, like, uh, you might not see it, one way and then like you might be like oh well i hold on to this topic because xyz 
and then you hear a story about, you know, someone else experiencing something that you've never experienced and you go, oh, that's horrible. I don't want that to happen to someone. And then you start Mm -hmm. thinking that way and stuff. So the whole being an adult thing has always been like for controversial topics like that. For me, it's just I've always looked at it as a learning experience, not an attacking, like (laughs) trying to convince the other person. Like, I don't care what they believe in. I just want to know why they believe in it. Yeah. That's, that's kind of the yeah, what an episode for Steven to not be in. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's kind of the point I was trying to make, Pat, when you said that the goal has always been to si- silence your, your opposition. Like, yes, I agree with that. It's been around forever. But that's like something that happens in the background. Like on a, sure. on a, on a world stage of debate, nowadays, the goal is just to like not let that person talk at all. Whereas I would say in the past on a world stage of debate, debate happened. Again, gray area. Yeah, At least for me, really like I, it, it, it depends what the topic is. Like what, what's being discussed? Anything, anything. I would say in the past, anything that was debated was debated. Now, it no one's going to have, have a, a good example. About, I have a good about example of that. Yeah. Uh, rightfully so. That or, or communism. There, there yeah. was no debate. There was bombs being dropped yeah. based on how they wanted to run a government. <laughs> like, there yeah. was no debate. It was a, hey, stop. And they were like, no. We were like, okay, how's a B-52? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> you guys it's are, just, it's funny. You're pointing out the Go exceptions, ahead. not not the, not, the min- not the majority. There are because exceptions I, that's what classifies it as a gray area. There are exceptions to everything in life, period but the majority is what matters. Yeah, I mean, I understand that for sure. I'm just saying it's what makes it a gray area, though, is that there always is going to be an extreme on either side. The only reason I brought that up is because that was the first example that came to my head. I can't think of any minority, but (laughs) I was just like, well, this is funny. (laughs) There's always extremists on every side, but the extremists are a very small percentage of both sides. It was even like meat eaters versus vegans, and they're their lifestyle choices. Yeah. Like there's extreme vegans and there's extreme meat eaters that go at each other's mm-hmm. throats on purpose. But the majority of the people, yeah. like myself, I don't give a fuck what you eat. Don't tell Bingo. me what to eat and I won't tell you what to eat. But I also don't want a participation trophy either. I want first or <laughs> I'll try again next year. Yeah. yeah. Gold, <laughs> silver, or bronze. That's the only that's the only acceptable ones there. Well, no, we're going for champ. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, there's different sports. You're either first or your last. <laughs> <sighs> well, that was fun. You guys have any like funny stories you guys want to talk about so that we can lighten the mood a little before we go? <laughs> uh... I don't want to just serve a shit sandwich, but you know all the shit's shit just sandwich. falling out of it. It was a pretty good discussion, in my opinion. No, it was. It was. It was. I just like to think that we're a, a comedy podcast, and that was comically not funny yeah <laughs> i just i just thought we were just an anything anything and everything podcast that was the, the whole yeah that's very true <laughs> this is this is true well i guess on that note we'll call it an episode um if you decide that you didn't like any of our opinions on the podcast then you can just fucking not watch it um so hot take for me i don't care i love everyone i hate everyone based on in a bit or yeah individual interaction so or, it doesn't or, fucking matter to me or leave a comment <laughs> call me a fucking pasty cisgender straight male i don't give a fuck yeah First no i actually i think it would be a cool idea to have <laughs> someone on that is just coming like maybe they want to have like a, a discussion but it has to be an adult discussion on why you choose to believe a certain way or maybe you can open our eyes to to a different thing honestly because uh, I think the more that we have conversations like that uh, and the more we can poke holes in each other's beliefs, I think uh, we can make a better society based on conversation and having adult conversations uh, and just understanding where people are coming from. And uh, the more we divulge uh, certain topics like that, I think the more we can all come together and uh, move forward. So, well yeah, with that, uh, appreciate Y'all watching, and we'll see you next time. Yep. Thanks, guys.